Hello and welcome to another episode. Today we will look at this Sharp Twin Famicom. This was sent to me by Riley Sky 100 and apparently it doesn't power on and today we'll determine what is causing that hopefully. He did a little uh, research of his own and it was suggested that he replace the capacitors on the main board. So he sent those along in the package. So what we'll do now is um, take a look at that, plug it in, see if it does anything for us, and then we will dig in and investigate the problem. Let's get into it. Okay, so here it is. I've um, set up the power supply and the output for the television. We'll pop in a game here. And when we turn on the power, as you can see, power light doesn't come on. It does absolutely nothing. So what we'll do is, uh, Get this thing cracked open and see what's inside. Okay, so this is the first time I've done one of these, so let's take a look at how we actually get inside here. The controllers are, um, are built in. They're hardwired from the back. We'll just flip this over like so. Now, there is some kind of little cover here that I will take off. Make sure there are no screws underneath. Simply unplug that, make sure you push in the little tab, and lift up on the connector. So before I plug it in and do some testing for voltages, what I'll do is um, plug this set of cables back in. At this state, I don't need them out of there. Okay, let's juice it up. So currently no power. Okay, so it's time to bust out the trusty multimeter here. Keep it on DC. We'll find a ground point. Um, I usually like to stick it on like some metal shielding. Okay, so let's plug this in. I have my multimeter set to voltage, DC. I'm just gonna turn this on here. 72, 72, 73, 2, 2. So we have voltage coming in. for cold solder joints. The board looks pretty solid. And just for the fun of it, I'm gonna check that power switch. Power switch is good. Okay, so what I decided to do after testing the um, 
board for various voltages. So I'm going to go ahead and install that capacitor kit that I got with this system. And um, get all these caps replaced. And then we'll test it with that and see if that fixes our issue. And if that doesn't, we will continue to replace caps in the power supply and then go from there. So let's get into replacing some capacitors. Okay, so I've replaced all the caps from the kit I was supplied with. And it does the same thing. Okay, I'm gonna um, pull this transistor and check to see if it's actually shorted or not. Okay, so I have the power supply. I took out the, um, the transistor, tested that not in the board. It doesn't have any issues. It seems fine. Um, I plugged this in by itself and I was able to get five volts from pin one and two, like I'm supposed to. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to reinstall this into the case, plug it in, and see if my voltage changes, which would mean something would be up with the main board here. So let's get this back in and connect it. Okay, so here's what I came up with so far. It's the idea I have. This is our power switch. These two poles here and here connect when it turns on. So what I did is I traced back I don't know if you can see that, but the trace on the circuit board it comes down here, down around, over to I believe it was uh, this pin here. And if you flip it over, your pin connection is here. That goes under the controller port, down along this side, and over to here. If we start looking in that location, it looks pretty crusty, but if we flip it over, It looks extremely crusty, especially that via right there. Okay, so I cleaned up these solder points there and basically just re-soldered the pads in. I checked continuity between my switch portions. Now I'm just gonna try this once more. I did get it to boot up for me when I bridged pin seven and eight on the power supply. Still no juice. I think I'm gonna take a wire from the switch here will be a nice easy fix. And patch it in over here somewhere. On the connector on the underside. And it's the one that's really corroded. So I'm gonna jump from here to here, as you can see. That should be connected, but it's not. We don't like having all kinds of extra wire hanging off because that just looks sloppy. Cut 
that in the air. Actually, because the wire is thin enough, I'm going to use my soldering iron to just melt it back instead of stripping it out. Add a little solder flux. Probably more than enough. Come in and hit this guy up. Like so. So now, with that being said, we should now have continuity between here and pin 8, I mean pin 7, and we do. Okay, so we have the new switch trace wired in there, and um, we do have signs of life. So it comes on. Looks like there's a battery error. So that's a little weird to see that message. But um, what I'm gonna do is try to fix this floppy drive here on the disk drive, because it's not reading games, it's just giving me an error message. So, we'll take a look at that, see what's going on. Okay, so I replaced all the caps on that little board here. Um, everything else looks good. I don't see any wacky broken traces or anything. Okay, so I took a break. It's the next day. Um, there are a few issues I still need to address with this Famicom. Um, one is the sound is quite messed up. Two, the disk drive gives me an error, me error message of 22, which means um, the spindle is probably out of alignment when the belt was changed in this. So I need to fix that. So the sound, the belt, and um, I think other than that, we should be all set. But um, let me show you the sound problem we're having. We'll, uh, we'll turn it on. Not so good. It sounds terrible. We got that nasty hum. So I tinkered around a little while, you know, trying to figure out what the hell was going on. But, if we go ahead and unplug controller 2, which has a microphone and gain slider built into it. Okay, so controller 2 is disconnected. And now we will power it on. Just as it should sound. So there's an issue with the controller and the disk drive. So I guess the first thing we will address is the most difficult part will be um, the disk drive here. We can go ahead and put in a cartridge. That works fine. Sounds good. So, 
Let's see if we can't align that spindle on the disk drive. Okay, so with the um, face plate off and the bottom plate off, if we look inside, it's actually a pretty good shot of it. Here is the little spindle. What we have to do is rotate this gear by hand, like, like so, so we can see an Allen screw, which is that guy right there. And the idea is to loosen this. And once we get that loose, we're going to adjust the, um, basically the gear ratio assembly to a line, and then we tighten that back up. Yep, so I um, looked over this disk drive. I have adjusted it over three days and was never able to get it to read games. So um, this portion I'm gonna say is a fail. So I would probably suggest getting this replaced. I went through many guides of spindle alignment and adjustments and couldn't get it to do anything except give me a couple error messages, fine tuning. Like I said, three days. I'm giving up on this portion here, unfortunately. I couldn't get that fixed, but you can't win them all. So the last issue will be the sound problems, that hum that we're getting from controller two. So I'm gonna crack that open, um, probably replace the caps in there, and see if that cures the sound issue. I'll get this cracked open and we'll see what's inside. Okay, so we have a couple of capacitors we can switch out. The buttons look pretty good actually. I'll probably clean up this uh, little slider here. Make sure that's making a nice contact on those contacts there. See if we can't figure out why this thing is making a hum sound. So yeah, I'll get these capacitors swapped out and then we will give it a test. Let's see how it goes from there. Okay, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's the that hum we were getting. Now that's caused by, apparently, this slider not making the appropriate contact on the PCB. So if I push on this, it goes away. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this up now. So um, this guy will play cartridge games at this point. The sound's repaired. Um, it comes on now. Um, controllers work fine. The only thing that doesn't work on this machine currently is the disk drive, which is a shame. It plays cartridge games just fine. Um, like I said, I tried to fix the disk drive over a three day period and could not get it going at all with multiple adjustments. But um, we got rid of the sound issue. We got it powered on. It'll play cartridges. 
it just won't play the disc games. So unfortunately this is kind of a bust, but not really, it's still halfway usable. So there it is, you know, you can't win them all, but there you go, Riley Sky 100. We'll uh, get this back to you as soon as possible. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the description below, or you can find me on Facebook and contact me that way. So, um, sorry if this video was a little lengthy, but uh, there it is. We have a repaired, somewhat repaired, sharp twin Famicom, and um, yeah, that's that. I'm pretty happy with being able to get it working. So until next time, we will see you later. Thanks for watching.